we want to find the general solution to the given differential equation and then verify the solution. So the first thing we should recognize is that we have a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. Meaning the differential equation fits this form here and therefore we can solve the differential equation by solving the characteristic equation given here using the values of a, b, and c, our constant coefficients. And then based upon the values of r, it will tell us which form to use for our general solution, which in this case will be this form here. So looking at the form of the differential equation, notice that a is equal to two, b is equal to one, and c is equal to negative three. And therefore the characteristic equation would be two r squared plus one r plus r minus three equals zero. And now to solve this, let's see if it's factorable. If it is factorable, it'll factor into two binomial factors. The first terms must come from the factors of two r squared, which would be two r and r. And now we want to place the factors of negative three in the second positions so that the sum of the inner product and outer product is equal to positive one r. Notice we place the factor of positive three here and the factor of negative one here. The inner product is positive three r. The outer product is negative two r, giving us a sum of positive one r, and therefore it is factorable. And since this product is equal to zero, either two r plus three equals zero, or r minus one equals zero. So to solve for r here, we would subtract three and divide by two. Let's call this r sub one equals negative three halves. And let's call this r sub two, we would add one. r sub two equals one. Notice here we have two distinct real solutions to the characteristic equation, also called characteristic values. It's important to recognize this because it does affect the form of the general solution. Again, because we have two distinct real roots, this is the form of the general solution. If we have two real and equal roots, this is the form of the general solution. Notice the extra factor of x here. And if we have two complex roots, this is the form of the general solution. But again, because we have two distinct real roots, general solution will be y of x in this form. So our general solution is y of x, so let's just call it y, equals c sub one, a constant, times e, raised to the power of r sub one times x, that would be negative three x divided by two, plus c sub two times e raised to the power of r sub two times x, which would just be one x or x. So here's the general solution to the differential equation. But now we're asked to verify the solution, which means we'll also have to find y prime and y double prime, and then perform substitution to verify the left side is equal to zero. Let's go ahead and find our derivatives here. So y prime will require the chain rule for this first term. We'll have c sub one times e raised to the power of negative three x divided by two times negative three halves. So negative three halves c sub one e to the power of negative three x divided by two plus the derivative of the second term, which would just be c sub two e to the x. And now for y double prime, we have to apply the chain rule again on this first term. Notice that negative three halves times negative three halves is nine fourths. So we'll have nine fourths c sub one e to the power of negative three x divided by two, and again plus c sub two times e to the x. So again, now we're going to take y, y prime, and y double prime, and perform substitution into the original differential equation. So this will give us two times nine fourths c sub one e to the power of negative three x divided by two plus c sub two e to the x. Then we'll have plus y prime, just negative three halves, c sub one e to the power of negative three x divided by two plus c sub two e to the x, and then minus three times y, which we found to be c sub one e to the power of negative three x divided by two plus c sub two e to the x. 
we want to verify this is equal to zero. So now we'll distribute. Two times nine-fourths would be eighteen-fourths, or nine-halves. So we have nine-halves, and then we'd have plus two, c sub two e to the x, and then we're going to have minus three-halves, c sub one e to the negative three x divided by two, plus c sub two e to the x. Now we'll distribute negative three because of the minus, minus, this is going to be three times c sub one, but notice how all these other terms have a denominator of two. So minus three is the same as minus six halves, so minus six halves c sub one e to the negative three x divided by two, and then minus three c sub two e to the x equals zero. Now let's identify the like terms. Notice there are three c sub one terms, one, two, three, and there are also three c sub two terms. Here, here, and here. Let's first look at the c sub one terms. Notice they are like terms because they all contain c sub one as well as e raised to the power of negative three x divided by two. So here we have nine halves minus three halves, that would be that would be positive six halves c sub one times the exponential. But then we have minus six halves c sub one times the exponential. So all of these combine to zero. Looking at the c sub two terms, we have two c sub two times e to the x plus one c sub two e to the x. That's three c sub two e to the x. And then minus three c sub two e to the x would be zero. So notice, in fact, the left side is equal to zero. Verifying it satisfies the equation because we have zero equals zero. So we found our general solution correctly. I hope you found this helpful.